We now interrupt your regularly scheduled pre-worship slideshow for this special chili-based announcement. As this is Super Bowl weekend, last night would have been our 29th annual chili cook-off. A night of food, fellowship, and fun. Sigh. But do not fret, for we have a very different Super Bowl this year that we will share with our Lazarus House neighbors. Hi, I'm Sean Lyons. And I'm Sean Walsh, your chili cook-off MCs. This Wednesday, February 12th, 10th, sure. 10th, 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 
take a moment and visit southchurch.com slash connect. There you can provide a bit of information about who you are and help us follow up to get to know you better and welcome you into the life of our community. So go ahead, take a moment and do that now or you can do it at any point during worship. We are a praying congregation and we pray every time we are in worship together. So I want to invite you to be in prayer with us. You can engage in our time of prayer later in worship by offering your prayer requests, your joys, your concerns, those that are a little bit of each. If you can type them into the chat on YouTube, you're welcome to do that. Or if you'd prefer to use uh, our Google form, it's easy to use. You can find it at southchurch.com slash prayer. And there we will get those prayers and we will pull them together and offer them to God together later in worship. So let us be in prayer with and for you. I have a few announcements for you today about things going on in the life of our congregation. I hope those of you who are members know that today is our annual meeting. It will be held on Zoom immediately following worship. There is a link for that in your email. You should have gotten it through the buzz. We will be voting on our budget and talking about a few other things in the life of our church. So after worship, I hope you will pop over while only members of the church can vote, all who have the link are welcome to join us and participate in the conversation and see what's happening in how our church works together to serve God and one another. As you just heard from that wonderful announcement from Sean and from Shar about our modified chili cook-off this year, I hope you will join us this Wednesday for our drive through food drive. It's monthly and it's every second Wednesday, and it, that is this Wednesday. <laughs> that was a bit of a tongue twister. It is from 12 to 2 p.m., and you saw some of those items you can pick up. You can find more information in our weekly email, and you can drive on through, pull them out, and drive on back onto the rest of your day. It's a great way to help support Lazarus House and all those who are feeling um, food insecure uh, in this season. So help us feed our neighbors this Wednesday, 12 to 2. Kathy wants you to know, our Minister of Music, that our children's choirs have started up again for the winter and for the spring. Preschoolers will get weekly 35-minute videos singing with Miss Kathy and their band in a box. That sounds fun. The Carol Choir elementary kids use a variety of safe in-person and online programming. And the middle and high school singers and youth choir are working on a couple of virtual musical projects. There's so much going on no matter your age in our music program. For more information, you can email Kathy. That's Kathy with a C at southchurch.com. As I hope you know, there's so much happening in the life of our church and in our congregation. And you are welcome to jump into it wherever you are in life's journey and wherever you are in the world. But we haven't come for announcements. We've come together to worship God. And so in that spirit, I invite you to join me in prayer. Good and holy God, indeed it is good that we should worship you. It's good that we should turn our hearts to you because when we turn all we have over to you, in return you pour out love, you pour out hope, you pour out a new perspective we didn't even know we could have, oh God. In worship, you offer us a chance to step into mystery, to step into hope, to find a new part of ourselves that you can see but is hidden to us. Be with us in this time of worship today, oh God. Be with the words we speak. Be with the prayers we pray. Might you hear it all and bundle it all up, O oh God, in such a way that our hearts are renewed and transformed by being together in worship. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Touch our hearts this day wherever we are. Draw us closer together and lift us up, we pray in thankfulness. In Jesus' name, amen.
together this morning. This morning, we are taking some time to talk about how God calls us to really see one another, to look at the world and see the ways that injustice is such a part of it, and how we can bring our very own needle and thread to sew the world back together, to be part of God's healing for the world. We're going to use my very favorite coat to help tell that story. You see, I love this coat. I bought it like six years ago. It's so warm. It keeps me nice and cozy on these super cold winter days. <sighs> I feel warmer already. Every time I wear this coat, the wind never gets in. It's the warmest coat I've ever owned. And when you look at it from the front, it looks pretty nice. It's comfy, fits nice, feels good. But the thing is, this coat's kind of broken. On the outside, there are these two holes in the back. And you know what's kind of funny about this? I know these holes exist. I know that they exist. But because they're on the back of my coat and I can't see them, I don't do anything about them. Isn't that, that's a little embarrassing to say out loud, but I'm trusting you to just be in this with me for a second. I don't see the holes in the coat and so I forget about them and so I go about my life. Truthfully, that's kind of how our, our culture teaches us to treat things too. That if we can't see the problem, if we can't see the brokenness, if we can't see the injustice, then we just go about our lives, right? If we can't see with our faces and eyes that people are hungry or people are left out or people are treated differently because of who they are or the color of their skin, if we can't see that right away, sometimes we're just like, okay, and we go about our days. But Isaiah reminds us today that we are called to look and to see, to really see to see the ways that things are broken, to see the ways that people are mistreated, and to take our special needle and thread that we're given by God, that God is instilling inside of us, each of us has our own needle and thread, that we can sew the world back together. Because here's the other thing, friends, these holes in my jacket, they're not a huge problem right now for me, but eventually they're gonna be a huge problem Eventually the hole is going to make its way to the front and I will not be able to ignore it. But you know what? In our world, we are called to, to heal the things that are broken, to heal the ways that people are not welcomed in and taken care of, to bring healing through sharing our food, speaking the truth, sharing in love. We're called to do all those things. Each and each of us has a talent or a gift, has a special way of caring 
that can make that happen. You could think of your special way of caring like your very own needle and thread that you could sew the world back together like I'm gonna sew my jacket back together. So I wonder, what is your special needle and thread? What is your special way of caring, your special gift that helps heal the things that are broken, that helps make the world better for other people? Because really every time we seek to make the world better, every time we help one another, we're drawn closer to God and closer to our siblings in faith and siblings in humanity. And that's an incredible gift. So this week, however you can, there are two things we're gonna do. One is we're gonna really look, we're really gonna give ourselves the space to see the world as it is and to see the people who are in need. And we're not just gonna look, we're also gonna do. We're gonna find ways, whether it's through donating to a food drive or speaking the truth to someone who is being unkind to another person or by learning something new for ourselves about how the world is working right now and how we can make it better, Doing those things will be like bringing our own needle and thread to the world and bringing it back together and bringing some healing. So those are our two things. We're going to look and we're going to heal. Let's pray. God, thank you for being our needle and thread, for seeking to knit the world back together, to bringing us all back together. Amen. Our scripture today is from Isaiah 58, verses 6 through 12. Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the throngs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and to bring the homeless poor into your house, when you see the naked to cover them, and not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry, and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness, and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like in a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall rise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. The word of God for the people of God. The Love your neighbor as yourself by seeing you. 
It's been a hard winter. The cold, the isolation, the loneliness, the anxiety, the fear brought on by this global pandemic. It's been more than 10 months and there is an exhaustion and weariness factor that's beginning to take its toll. Especially as we soon lap ourselves, experiencing yet another Lent and Easter apart without the opportunities for renewal and connection that we so deeply long for. The people of Isaiah's day were also struggling. Our scripture passage begins with what scholars call the third Isaiah, when the exiled people had finally returned home. This is something they had desired for generations. Yet when they returned from Babylon to a city in ruins, a place devastated by war and violence, they felt disillusioned and disappointed. All they wanted was a new start. They wanted to, it to feel like the old normal again. They went to their faith community longing to set aside the devastation and stress in order to come into a space of solace and peace. They probably wanted what many of us want, a chance to forget about all the pain and division outside those temple walls. But to their chagrin, what happened? The prophet preached a challenging sermon. Is not this the fast that I choose? Isaiah proclaimed on God's behalf. To loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and bring the homeless poor into your house, and when you see the naked, to cover them, and not to hide yourself from your own kin. The prophet proclaimed to his own beleaguered people that unless their worship was tied to their care for others, to the way they use their power on behalf of those less fortunate, then something was amiss. The church has always lived with the tension of being a place of solace and comfort, while at the same time being a place of deep of engagement with the pain and suffering of the world. When I feel this tension, I'm reminded of the Reverend Jim Wallace who wrote the book, God's Politics, more than a decade ago. In the book, he tells the story of a seminary project where he and other students were challenged to go through the entire Bible and literally cut out any parts having to do with justice, anything having to do with God's concern for the poor, the oppressed, the disenfranchised. It was a lengthy several month project because there were so many passages that fit that description. And in the end, they were left with a skinny volume of scripture. Today, at our annual meeting, we'll give thanks for the ways that we've put our faith into action, for the ways we've attempted to live into Isaiah's words to loosen the bonds of injustice. I've seen us do that in three distinct ways. The first is that in this past year, we have given away an incredible amount of money. You all have been so generous we donated more than $50,000 directly to mission partners through our offering plate, through our weekly offering. And at Thanksgiving, you donated more than $17,000 in grocery gift cards. And at Christmas, you donated not one well, but five wells to the Navajo Nation. 
Second, there's been the work of serving others and giving not just of our money, but of our time and energy. We found ways to do this that are socially distanced yet made an impact through our month long or six week long season of service, through our new monthly pop the trunk drives and through our giving garden where we harvested 10,000 pounds of fresh produce for our neighbors. Third, we've worked to free the oppressed through the work of justice and advocacy. Not every congregation is brave enough to do this work, so I'm indebted to our social justice coalition and green team. They have taught us about racial injustice, implicit bias, mass incarceration, immigration reform, and the climate crisis. They have showed us how to love God and love God's people and God's creation. Our Jewish friends have a term for this threefold work of generosity and service and advocacy for the disenfranchised. They call it tikkun olam, repairing the world. This isn't the kind of work that we could just check off our to-do list as if it were ever done. It's the work of a lifetime to serve, to advocate, to uplift the brokenhearted. Yet it's easy to feel overwhelmed and wonder what could I fix here? What's mine to repair? When I think tangibly of a favorite torn jacket or the rip in my son's jeans, I think of our God who is a mender, our God who takes what the world considers disposable and looks at it with patience to repair what is broken in each of us and in the world around us. Stitch by stitch, God works to repair the broken places of our hearts and of our world. And we have a choice to ignore the tear, to pretend it's not there, or to join God in the holy work of mending and restoring and healing this world. It's not someone else's work, it's our work. The call to follow in the way of Jesus is about choosing both comfort and challenge. It's about both retreat from the world and deep engagement in its suffering. It's about inhaling God's love and compassion for ourselves and exhaling that love and compassion out into the world. Isaiah reminds us that when you do this hard and holy work, your light shall break forth like the dawn. May we see the reflection of God's light as we seek to follow in the way of Jesus in our service, advocacy, and generosity until every tear is mended, until every confining yoke is broken, and all the hungry are fed. May it be so. Amen. <laughs> Dana, thank you so much for that wonderful sermon. And Jen, for that wonderful children's message that both preached to my heart, and I could see from the comments many others as well. I love that phrase, tikkun olam, repairing the world, because indeed, that is our work as people. That is our work in partnership with God, is to repair the world and to begin with our own hearts. 
And I firmly believe one of the ways in which we repair the world in our own hearts is through prayer, is through lifting up the things in our lives that we need help with, the things in our lives that we're celebrating, the things we're afraid of, all the joys and the concerns, everything that is a little bit of each, lifting them up in word and in silence to God and to one another, bit by bit mends all the brokenness in our world. As we begin our time of prayer, I lift up this prayer for Ellen Van Arsdale, who offers prayers for Joan as she learned of a new cancer diagnosis. God, in your mercy, this is our prayer. Phil offers prayers for his mom, Lorraine, his uncle, Steve, and Aunt Jackie. This is our prayer. We offer prayers today for our sister Robin Gendron, who is grieving the death of her brother Herb Stahl, who passed away yesterday from complications of Parkinson's disease. She and Wayne are grateful and relieved that he is no longer suffering. These are our prayers. Pastor Joe offers prayers this week is asking for prayers this week for his family as Thursday will be the one-year anniversary of their dad's passing. And prayers for Adam, who lost his finger in a table saw accident last night. Prayers that his finger can be reattached and heal to full use. Indeed, God, in your mercy, this is our prayer. Nancy offers continued prayers for her sister-in-law, Carolyn, who very recently lost her daughter, Christy, and her husband. God, in your mercy, this is our prayer. Karen offers prayers for her sister and her husband's family, for her father-in-law who has been diagnosed with terminal lung cancer. God, in your mercy, this is our prayer. Marie offers prayers of comfort for the Killian family on the sudden death last Tuesday of their mother and her dear friend Priscilla. God, in your mercy, this is our prayer. Deb offers prayers for the Bancroft Elementary School community on the sudden death of their beloved third grade teacher, Miss P. Indeed, a whole community grieving. God, in your mercy, this is our prayer. Peggy offers prayers for her husband, Ralph, who has a string of new health issues and was in the hospital Friday and Saturday. Prayers of strength, patience, and grace for Peggy in coping with new care demands. Indeed, God, in your mercy, This is our prayer. Cal Georgine offers prayers for her friend Brenda, who is dealing with a recurrence of cancer, and for her cousin Suzanne, who is recuperating from cancer surgery. God, in your mercy, these are our prayers. Lindsay offers prayers of comfort for her, for she got her tonsils out a week ago and is in lots of pain. Please pray, it clears up as soon as possible. She misses food indeed, Lindsay. We hold you in prayer. This is our prayer. Jennifer asks for prayers for her father, Tom Ross, who recently passed. May he rest in peace. We pray for his family, including you, Jennifer, who miss him so much. Indeed, God, in your mercy, this is our prayer. Jeff offers prayers of thankfulness and gratitude that God has nudged the Lazarus House staff to partner with the Franciscan Brothers of Lawrence to create warming stations for those who have no place to go when temperatures get so cold. Indeed, we give thanks. 
This is our prayer. Linda offers prayers of healing for her friend, Jesse O'Shea. God, in your mercy. I'm going to try another candle here. God, in your mercy. This is our prayer. Mary Ann offers prayers of healing for her brother-in-law, John Gamber, home recovering from COVID, for her sister Liz, his wife grieving the loss of her only son two weeks ago. God, in your mercy. These are our prayers. Jessica offers a prayer for her sister as she struggles with mental health issues and for her family as we hope to support her through it. Indeed, for all those struggling with mental health and all those who love them, this is our prayer. Sally offers prayers of healing and peace for her son John, who suffers from bipolar disorder. Indeed, God, in your mercy, this is our prayer. And Susan offers prayers of celebration for her Aunt Helen, who celebrated her 100th birthday, praise God, on the 4th of February. God, in your mercy, this is our prayer. Indeed, with all of these prayers in our hearts, all these prayers circling around us that we've spoken, let us continue in a time of prayer. Good and holy God, in these cold winter months, we are warmed by the candlelight of our prayers. We feel its physical warmth, O oh God, but we feel a spiritual warmth as well. A warmth in knowing that you are a God who hears our prayers. You are a God who longs for our prayers. Longs for them so that we might unburden our hearts and our spirits by offering them to you. And for that we give you thanks. We are people who are warmed by prayers, O oh God, because there is great comfort in knowing that we do not journey alone. That we have a community, we have a people who will hold the joys and the concerns of our hearts in such a way to share the burden of pain and the highs of joy. We are warmed, O oh God, by the light of these prayers because we trust that through every prayer we speak, we stitch another piece of thread drawing the world together and repairing every broken heart, wiping away every tear, mending every place in which there is division. Help us in our prayers. Help us live into our call to be people of prayer and receive all we offer to you. These humble prayers of our hearts, O oh God, all those spoken and so many more unspoken. We offer them all to you, O oh God, in the name of our Lord and our brother Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
As many of you know, every week in worship, we name a different mission partner to support with our weekly offering. And now that we are in a new month, we have a new mission partner, and our mission team for this month has chosen Common Cathedral, which is a ministry many of us know. If you don't know them very well, don't worry. Over the month of February, you are going to hear from lots of different people, folks in our congregation, folks on the staff of Common Cathedral, and some of the folks who are clients and are part of the community of Common Cathedral. You're going to hear a lot of different voices that I hope will touch your heart. So as we begin learning about Common Cathedral this week, we have a special introduction from Katie Holden. Hello, my name is Katie Holden, and eight years ago, I went to City Reach with my confirmation class, where we spent the night learning about the issue of homelessness in Boston. City Reach is just one of the programs run by Common Cathedral, a Christian organization committed to supporting the homeless population in Boston. A moment that has stuck with me since this experience was learning from City Reach volunteers that some people without housing, when offered the chance to go to a shelter or another alternative, choose to stay on the streets because of the independence it affords them and because sometimes those alternatives can be more dangerous than living on the streets due to drugs, overcrowding, and insufficient resources. While this surprised me at first, I came to respect their choice and was grateful for an organization like City Reach who meets people where they're at without any strings attached and offers them dignity and respect. City Reach provides people with a brown bag lunch, clean socks, and a warm place to sit for an afternoon to escape the cold Boston winter. For me, I might take those things for granted, but for someone without steady housing, those things can mean getting to choose to stay independent in a life that probably does not offer many choices. During the month of February, our loose offerings will be going to Common Cathedral, the organization that sponsors City Reach, as well as some other programs. In a moment, you'll hear more about Common Cathedral and the rest of their programming from their executive director, Amanda. This is an organization that's doing really important work, and I've committed to supporting them this month. I hope you'll join me. Hi, South Church. Thank you so much for choosing Common Cathedral this month to partner with us in our ministry. We know that many of you might know of us from Common Art or Common Cathedral on Sundays or City Reach or all of our programs. But what we hope you all know is, is that our programs help us to build a church community for those that are living on the streets and in the shelters in Boston. Common Cathedral is a vibrant and active congregation. We have programs six days a week. On Sundays, we are gathering at Brewer's Fountain where we have lunch for 150 people and then we have a simple worship starting at one. On Mondays and Tuesdays, our staff are out on the streets checking on our congregation members wherever they might be. On Wednesdays, we have Common Art, an open art studio where all are welcomed in to create beautiful works of art. And on, Wednesday, or, and on Thursdays and Fridays, we have Boston Warm, which is an open day center where people are welcomed in to have um, access to bathrooms and coffee and food and an opportunity to warm up in the winter months. All of what we do, we are continually building relationships with our friends who are chronically homeless or living on the streets. And we do this because of the support that you give us, because of the love and the prayers and all of the ways that you show um, how much you care for our congregation. So for that, we are really grateful. Thank you for your years of partnership. This is um, a wonderful opportunity for our two congregations to grow deeper together. Thank you so much.
Good people, I want to thank you so much for all you've brought to worship today, for your presence, your prayers, your love and support. And as we prepare to go from this time of worship together, I hope you will remember that text we read today. And you will remember that God was reminding us that we can be repairers of the breach. That you might go from this time of worship renewed in your sense of confidence that you can repair the world. That you can mend broken hearts. That you can welcome in the outcast. That you can love those deemed unlovable. And through it, the world might be changed. Of course, we don't do it alone. We do it together and only through the help of God. So good people, go from this time of worship together with the hope, peace, and love of God, our Creator, Christ, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Sustainer, now and forever. Good people, go in peace. Amen. Amen.